Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Well, we're getting there. Everything so far is from either dead standing, snowfall, or windfall. And a lot of downed trees from the snow this year, and some dead tops, like there on the horizon, you could see a, a tree. You see that one in the center of the screen? That one's right behind my house. It's got a dead top. The rest of the tree's live, but within two years, that'll be dead. And we found out that it is not sudden oak death syndrome, which is great, great news. It's still 25 miles to the south of us and moving this way, and they think it'll be here within 10 years, but so far, it's not here. But I think I know what's killing the trees. Let's see if I can find a piece of wood here. This is white speck. You see that white, those dots? And white speck, I believe, is a microorganism, and it actually is a structural degrade. And it can kill trees from white speck because it's too wet. So that's not real alarming. That's not like the spread of sudden oak death syndrome or um, Japanese beetle infestation. White speck's been with us a long, long time. Not very alarming. So we're getting a, getting a good jag of wood here. And those logs there are trees that were had dead tops. And I sure hate uh, cutting it up for firewood. I can get a lot of one by 12 out of these. There's uh, 14 one by 12s in that one. That's one by 12. That one has them um, 12 feet. That one 16 feet long. I get $800 a thousand for it, but I need firewood too. And if I open it up and find white speck, that would explain why the tops are dead. But usually if there's white speck in a log, you'll see it in the butt when you cut it. It'll just be white dots all over. And these look pretty good. But I need firewood too. Um, don't really need the money, I need the firewood. What would I do with the money? Buy firewood? Well, I haven't bought firewood. I don't think in the history of life, I don't think I've ever bought firewood. Started burning wood for heat, 1970. I've got a lot I could tell you folks about living off-grid, burning wood in the mountains as your only, only source of heat. And there's some things that are important to know about before you set out to think that you're going to go retire at a place and burn wood in your retirement. Just some things, but maybe that'll be in a, another video. I caught uh, this tree was down in the creek bottom. Uh, it's probably why it died, just too much water. But... That was kind of neat the way their centers rotted out and I can knock that out of there and put a terracotta pot in all of these and set them around and put mums in them. That looked neat. I'd like to do that. See what the wife thinks. So I think by the time we get this busted up and some of the old pine from the old deck I culled some of the trees out of the old uh, saw deck because uh, Ponderosa wasn't selling. And so rather than keeping it under sprinklers forever, I just pulled it out last year. and We burned some of it last winter. And the cedars that we had to cut for the uh, retaining wall that holds our spring bank uh, these are the limbs of some of the cedars. It's starting to rain again. It's raining. Well, I wanted to share something else with you. 
uh, my son, number five son. He's got a channel called Chasing Moby. He's quite a prolific hunter. And usually he hunts with bow and he puts the sneak on him. And he's really, really good at it with everything. Uh, deer, bear, cougar, coyotes. So he's gone the full gambit with hunting by uh, putting stealth into practice with the bow. Now I think he's into wanting to make his own bows and arrows and so forth. But he does the other side of the coin too. Um, he's got some friends that are uh, F-class shooters and he's getting into long distance shooting. So I was gonna leave a link on in the description of this video. Uh, it's a link to his spring bear hunt this year. He's got lots of them on his YouTube channel. It's called Chasing Moby. But there's an 1100 yard shot there. That's kind of interesting. And uh, I don't haven't even watched it yet, but he told me about it and I saw that it, it was posted. So there's an 1100 yard shot and then I think Sage um, got his bear down in a, a draw. So they both filled their tags that day. Him and a buddy. And 1,100 yards when it's windy is no joke. And it, sometimes it takes 20 minutes to set up a shot uh, when you're talking about those kinds of distances. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, you'll find on his channel, um, hunting in the high mountains and in the snow, bow hunting, and long distance shooting uh, in the desert, and uh, high mountain spring bear hunts, both bow and rifle. And he's put a lot of a lot of meat on our table over the years. It was kind of convenient. Uh, his wife wasn't real partial to venison, so I got all of his bucks for quite a few years. That was kind of nice. Well, I'm getting wet now. How about that? Oregon, it's pretty common. Maybe we'll have a cold, rainy summer. That'd be all right with me. Have a blessed day.